Well, how's it going, folks? Uh, I thought I would do a little bit of an update on this equipment that we have added to the planter, and we're going to talk about uh, what we're planting into here. Um, as you remember, I put the Mohawk closing wheels on uh, last year, about halfway through the season. That was, I guess it was a little, a little beyond that, and. Um, now we're better than halfway through this year's season, so we've got technically um, one whole season on these closing wheels. And they are starting to uh, deteriorate. Well, I've got one. I've got to change one right here. I just went once around this field, and they, they are falling off, falling apart as we speak. So, I've got a rubber closing wheel up in the tractor. I better uh, change that quick. Um, the plastic is wearing out on the sides here and this, this tooth part of the wheel has fallen off and I've had to change one, uh, two, three, four, and then um, we've had two, four, six spares plus two others eight six so i've changed ten of them i guess because i've got six that i've taken off four of these that i've put not put on and these six that came off of row one and two and sixteen have ended up on here so we have to order uh new closing wheels because again these ones are wearing out you can see what we should do is take them off and flip them over on the outside of the wheel. This is wore off. If we flipped them over, we'd probably get a little more life out of them. But I just, uh, I just don't want to take the time to do that. I just have to order new ones now. This open wheel here is a better design. Um, you know, it's all one piece, so we don't have to worry about it falling apart. We've got some uh, wear on the teeth here. So I don't think we would get much more than maybe a season and a half out of these wheels as they are. This other wheel down here, this, um, I forget what they call this, this is a curved spike tooth. Um, basically, it's about the same size as the tooth here, so they're probably going to show about the same amount of wear. So. Um, what we're doing is we are no-tilling into soybean stubble. Now what we've done here is my nephew came up with the Pottinger one-pass tool and he went around the outside of these lots and, and um, touched up some areas that we had uh, made some tracks with the combine um, and we're kind of doing a test strip here if you will too. He's documented where he's been with the Pottinger and then when we go in to do a, um, the harvest on this, we can lay that map, the harvest map, over the uh, tillage map and see if it made a difference uh, where we did tillage, minimal tillage versus uh, no-till. Um, we harvested these beans, if I remember right, it was January, first part of January or February, so we were late. Uh, in harvest in 2019 which actually we got you know we were harvesting them here in January and February of 2020 um, we have to hit this with a shot of herbicide and they're gonna hit this when they do the pre-emerge on the corn they're gonna go ahead and kill um, what's the, the green stuff that's growing up so We've done tillage. He went, uh, he's got eight, an 80 foot swath or about a 70 foot swath around the outside. He left me a test strip in the middle that he didn't do any tillage and he just um, touched off some of the spots where we made some ruts. So I'm going to change this corner or this uh, closing wheel and we're going to pop the drone up. We'll fly the drone around. Um, and I'll kind of do a little bit of talking as we go here. Just because I feel like running my mouth today. I haven't been doing any videos here lately. It's just been tough. Uh, but uh, we're going to start kicking out a couple here. I imagine all of you have 
uh, just kind of been sick of the whole corn plant thing with the amount of saturation that there has been with corn plant videos. This is um, an alfalfa piece here. This is cropland. Uh, Harvitron, which is a Harv Extra um, alfalfa. This was seeded in um, August of 2018. Looks like some primo stuff, but we got to hit it with a shot of herbicide. We've got some wheat coming up. We've got some mustard and some dandelions um, coming up in it, which it might clean itself out here um, after the fact, but actually is that wheat that's orchard grass so um let me this is wheat here wheat or rye uh wheat um let me get this closing wheel fixed and we'll pop the drone up in the air we're gonna fly over the orchard that's next door here too okay so i got the corner wheel switched out here's the old one here uh, about all that's good on this is maybe the bearing and uh, six bolts. But uh, we're gonna take off with the drone. Now a few of you have mentioned uh, from the last video here that it shouldn't take off on a metal surface. So you're probably right. I've done it, I've done it before, I've done it a lot. So um, this is the DJI drone here. I don't know if, you, if, I, shown, if I had shown anybody um, the controls on what it looks like uh, when you take off. So power button that's on the battery double press the power button on the controller and we need to find the app here and the app is loaded come, on, come to life came to life i'm gonna see what it says all right we are now ready to take off so i'm just gonna hold this little button here take off Hold my finger on the tab here. And there we go. So, we're going to get this up, get it flying. We're going to plant. We're going to kind of talk to you a little bit while the drone is flying around here. Alright, so we got to adjust the settings a little bit because when I was last uh, flying this, It was in the dark, so I got to make sure I turn on my vacuum meters, my hydraulic seat drive. I had that all turned off so you guys didn't have to listen to the damn planter screaming. Let me just lift off with the drone. We'll back up a little bit and uh, I'll give you a visual of the planter taking off if I can find uh, where I am. Okay, here we are, right over here. So, I've done uh, my first time around the field. And I need to grab a little more lighting. All right, crank up my throttle, get her in forward, make sure my auto steer's on, I'm on my guidance track, got my section control set i'm going to put the planter down make sure i got fertilizer turned on and we are going okay so um where we are in this field here we are in uh tisco and right to the north of where we're at and behind us is uh, Beacon Skiff Apple Orchard and as you can see they've started to put buds on all of the apple trees here so before we fly over into the orchard we're just kind of kind of show you what we've been doing here for today um, again this is soybean stubble here uh, some of it is um, no-till and then some of it has been tilled you can kind of see where the uh, green weeds are the grasses that are coming up that's um, that's where uh, it has not been tilled now uh, this farm here lays on a little bit of a side hill and we have what we call strips for those of you that are familiar with this type of topography um, you understand and know what uh, strips are all about these strips are about 
120 feet wide, I believe they are. They're like four, four acres a piece, roughly. I'm not quite in the middle of them right now, but you can kind of see with just a, a little bit of a look around here that they're not awful long. And then they're, they're contoured as well. And, and the reason for that is if you get a heavy rainstorm and this whole thing was all plowed, the uh, water would rush down over the hill here and as it would rush down over the hill it would form little river channels and it would cause this whole hill to wash out and the idea of putting the strips in like this is to slow that water down and kind of make it I don't know if you'd call it dissipate a little bit but flatten out so that it doesn't give any um, little avenues or river runs if you will uh, for the water to run it's kind of like when you seed a lawn you'll see people that put down uh, straw when they seed their lawn the straw the only real purpose of the straw is to kind of do that same thing it doesn't allow the water to pool up make a pool and then once that pool gets to the point where there's a lot of water in it it rushes out and when it gushes out it ends up leaving a little wash channel when the water falls from the sky and it lands on a on an area and it doesn't and it isn't allowed to pool up it won't run any river channels so that's kind of what we're doing here with this with the strips like this now um, this farm here I just got done planting that field in front of us uh, that field uh, was soybean uh, stubble as well and um, that was um, and we had minimum till on that or uh, you know we used the pottinger on it and then that other little field down in below it um, I ended up no tilling into that so we'll just fly over the top of this I've got to get turned around so we're just gonna hover over the top of this field here for a little bit. I'll let you look down on that while I get this planter turned around. Um, I gotta get heading back the other way. But this farm here is probably made up into, I probably should have done my homework on this. Um, it's gotta be all of 25 fields, if you will. And um, they're small fields. Our fields average in size we average about 11 acres per field. When we consider all of the small three and four acre fields, five acre fields, uh, when we figure in all of those balanced up against some of the larger ones, you know, 50, 60, 100 acres, 80 acres, 30, 40, you know, um, size, uh, size fields like that, um, once you uh, figure in these small ones, it brings your average acreage size down. So we're just going to kind of fly over um, and back where, oh, where I, I swung around in a circle here and I kind of lost my bearing. So uh, this is another field here that I'm going to no-till and my nephew went around this, the outside of this one and left everything in the center and then he's got some spots that are tilled up i probably should get down a little lower but i'm kind of worried about the trees and planting and flying at the same time um he's got some areas there where um i had made some ruts with the combine so we got a a limousine parked in behind this guy's house here this is the guy that owns this property we do not own this um i planted these fields across the road here this is all um, part of this farm as well and you can kind of see these strips are on a little bit of an angle just to kind of take up the all oh, the um, downward slope of the field and, and kind of utilize a, the strip um, to the best uh, yeah it, it utilizes it best if they're kind of if they kind of wrap around the hill um, I, I kind of had too many things I wanted to touch on here and I'm, I'm just not really making a lot of sense but um, and then there's one two three four there's five fields down below now um, over in on the other side of us is a beacon skiff apple orchard we're gonna fly over the top of a couple of residential houses here 
and you can kind of see the dust where uh, let's get it in sport mode here and we can fly a little faster I gotta watch it there's a windmill around here somewhere I don't want to get tangled in that uh, where is that windmill uh, sorry I'm turning this damn thing oh there it is right there I guess I'm way above it but um, beacon skiff you can you can see way down um, them white buildings way down to our right uh, that is their packing house there. They've got another packing house here, and they make um, hard cider and wine and whatever. And then um, this building way up here, this silver roof, um, it's kind of a C-shaped uh, building. That this On this side of the road is their retail stores, their retail store, if you will. And this is part of their orchard here. Uh, they've just renovated everything here in the last uh, four or five years and uh, it's just a, a really nice uh, retail location here. Uh, people come from all over and uh, come out here and pick apples and whatnot. This uh, particular apple farm is probably one of the largest um, apple farms in New York State. I could be wrong, but they are... They, They've got to be one of the largest. Let me get back here so we can get a complete look at the retail store here. It, it is laid out really nice. They kind of kept the old theme to um, what they started from. Now the, the building uh, to the left of that pole barn that's in the center there, uh, the hip roof barn, that was their original uh, retail store there and then they've built a couple of these um, other buildings are, are brand new here and then of course you got the apple orchard and people come from all over and they come out and uh, pick their own apples and they kind of make uh, a weekend out of it if you will and with this whole COVID thing going on I'm kind of wondering about um, all oh, apple stands and places like this that uh, you know kind of rely on um, being open during you know the the very seasonal time of the year and um, unfortunately I think with this whole COVID thing that's a freaking joke um, it's really gonna affect uh, businesses like this that really rely on the retail side of things to uh, keep them afloat for the year um, they uh, they do a, a fair amount of business um, retail wise compared to uh, their wholesale stuff and, and they need you know businesses like this they need um, to be able to uh, switching my guidance track around what are we doing here cancel hold on a second here Okay, so um, where did we leave off? Yeah, so they kind of need um, need to be able to be open. But um, yeah, so they need to be open. So unfortunately. Um, yeah, they're dealing with a kind of trouble like the that we're going through here. So, um, of course, their uh, business won't pick up until you know late mid mid to late August, right on through um, Thanksgiving time. But they do have um, like concert venues and whatever uh, throughout the summer weekends here, and uh, they've kind of been forced to. Uh, shut down with this whole COVID thing, um, which that is, uh, and that is, it's just, it's too bad, but uh, we don't need to talk about that anymore. So let's get back to the planner here. I imagine this video is getting about long enough. Um, I was just going to do a, a fly around on the uh, planner, and then I kind of figured that everybody's kind of seen enough planting already this year. Um, we kind of do a little flyover of the um, orchard here. I'll get down and see if we can't get a better look at 
Ah, uh, these apple trees here. These are a lot. There's a lot of brand new apple trees in here, and you can see that they are um, just starting to um, put their little buds on now. Uh, in past years, they have budded out early, and they have really worried about. Uh, an onslaught of frost coming in and, and they have in the past um, burned uh, you know either old apple trees or uh, whatever to keep the um, frost from settling in they don't have as much trouble up on this hill here but they've had trouble down in the, the valley uh, before with it so Right now, um, the hill that we are on, we are on the west side of uh, Cardiff Valley. And um, when I was doing that drone video the other day, um, let me see if I can, way over on that next hill that's way over there. That's where we were um, last time around when I was flying the drone. So. Uh, I ended up planting down in the valley here uh, yesterday, and now we are moved up on, um, well, we call it Beacon Skiff Hill. So, we're just coming into the point of this field. This field's 10 acres. We'll fly over, might as well get a shot of the of the planter and then we're gonna bring this down we've uh, yammered on about long enough here so let me get turned around and I will rejoin you guys when I get turned around or once I get turned around turn this way I got to turn that way I don't have enough room to get turned back around It is mighty dry here too. Um, it's it's been really nice. There's been parts of these fields that we couldn't even get near last year, and we're just getting right in there this year. So you can see the dust rolling off the planter here. That keeping noise is the uh, guidance. I just pressed the auto steer button there, so down like this now I'm getting into an area where the planter hasn't planted so got uh, kind of a uh, triangular point there and then I've got three rows that haven't yeah everything's on now and then we're gonna be into some into some uh, Soybean stubble that has not had any tillage done, and I don't know how much you're going to be able to see, but it would be nice if I had some toothed wheels all the way across this planter. But the conditions are absolutely awesome to be um, doing no till into. It's not too dry and it's not uh, too wet, and the soil is the planter is just crumbling through the. Um, soil and everything is just working superbly here. You can kind of see the uh, trench that the planter's making. Um, you, know, you, you can more or less do as much as the planter's doing with just the sole of your shoe, and that's um, that's that's really good. So. Plus soybean stubble, you know, it, it doesn't leave much trash on top of the ground. And it makes for a very nice um, seed bed, if you will, to uh, no-till into. You know, we've got some weeds growing here, but with the herbicide that they're going to use on that, it'll just knock them right down and um, it's going to work out really well. I don't foresee there being any difference in yield uh, where we are quote unquote no tilling versus the uh, tilled area that we're planting in through right now. This is uh, like I was saying earlier, 
this spot of the field right here is just where um, there was some ruts made um, by the combine. So I think I'm going to um, land the drone here and um, that's going to about uh, do it for this video. I'm, getting, I'm actually getting a low uh, battery warning as well. The drone has been up in the air for 18 minutes. So uh, with that being said, folks, I want to thank you for watching and we'll catch it the next video. Um, this is a little bit of a different uh, video where I'm just kind of running my mouth and uh, flying around here. So thanks for watching, folks, and we will catch it the next one.